What's up my friend, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to show you a really quick video going over 10 DAW shortcuts that will save you hours over time. And this is not just a promise, it's, it's really true. Um, shortcuts are so important when you're producing music because you want to let that inspiration flow, you want to maintain that, that energy, right, that motivation and if you have processes that take a long time or you just can't figure out how to do something that can really just impact your inspiration and your workflow. So hopefully these will really help you. And the best thing is most of these shortcuts that we're going to go over should be applicable to any DAW you're working in. This should not be super DAW specific. Um, I just used Logic myself. A lot of people also use Logic if they're on Mac, but if you're using Windows, you're using Cubase, uh, whatever, um, this should work for you too. So the first one I wanna go over is really, really simple, and that is simply to start and stop. So usually in most DAWs, you will have a play and a stop button, right? But it's a lot easier if you just map it to a certain key on your keypad. And in my case, I like to use the space bar. So it's just as simple as press pressing the space bar, and then it just plays, right? I'll just finish this phrase here. And then let's say I finish with that, I just press space again, right? A lot easier than having to come up here and press play and stop, play and stop every time I wanna do something. So that's number one, um, that, that will save you so much time. S seconds add up to minutes, which add up to hours. Number two is actually starting from the beginning. This is especially useful if you want to uh, go back to the beginning to listen to a session maybe that you just worked on. So uh, maybe you you just played the intro of a piece and uh, you just worked on the MIDI, you've massaged the data and you wanna hear the effects of it. Instead of going back to the very beginning and clicking the beginning, what you can do is just press enter or return on your keypad or on your keyboard, right? Your computer keyboard. So that's a really easy way to do that. And again, you can just map it to whatever key you want to. In my case, I just like to do enter um, and that's all it takes. So even if it's playing in the middle of something, I can press enter and it's gonna go back to the beginning and replay that, okay? That's number two. Number three is to simply record. If you wanna record a track, just make sure that you've selected the track, it's record enabled. And then in my case, I just press R and usually it gives me a count in of four beats or whatever the time signature is, and then it will allow me to uh, record that part. Let's say I wanna record the glockenspiel, for example. So um, I can just maybe start, I wanna record something in bar two, I press R, it gives me one bar, and then I can. Right, then I can start playing. So yeah, I, I don't really like to move the mouse around that much because there's so much stuff that you can be clicking and looking at on the screen. So R for record is just perfect for me. Number four is to quantize. Now quantize just simply means lining the MIDI notes up to the grid, okay? So for example, if I have a violin line that's a little bit lagging behind or it's a little bit too early and I want it to be locked into the grid, then I can simply press or highlight that note and then press Q and it's gonna adjust it to the closest point on the grid. Now. In most DAWs, you can assign the quantization value. So do you want it to be moving a 16th note value, an eighth note, quarter, half? Like the, the longer the note value, the more it's going to shift to the nearest uh, point on the grid. But the smaller you get, the more fine the adjustment is gonna be. But Q is really great because there, you can just highlight a whole bunch of notes and instead of moving every single note to the grid or t clicking and then shifting, um, all you need to do, do is press Q and then you can see the notes uh, shift a little bit to line up to the grid a little bit more. Um, and then most DAWs will give you also the ability to affect how strong you want that quantization to be. Do you want it to be really loose so you keep the human element or do you want it to be really strong at 100%? So that risks sounding more robotic, but it is more uh, obviously locked into the grid exactly how you want it to be. Okay, number, uh, number five is the solo function. If you just wanna hear a certain instrument on its own, instead of going here and pressing the solo button, you can just press S. And in my case, I've highlighted the Glock track, and so that one is the one being soloed up, but let's say I wanna hear the violins one on their own, I just click S, and it only plays that track, right? Super useful if you just wanna hear if there's a certain track that's doing something that's maybe clogging up the whole mix, especially useful when mixing. Um, and then that leads us directly to number six, which is to mute. So this is the opposite. If you wanna mute a track and you don't wanna hear it, then you just press M in logic at least. And then you can hear everything else except for that track. And then of course, while it's playing, you can repress M and it comes back in whenever you want. Okay, number seven, I actually changed around a little bit. I, I had written one down previously, but I realized there was one that was actually more practical, and that is to trim the region where the playhead currently is. 
So what that means is right now you can see all these regions, they're basically one region, like this green rectangle, it's all one green rectangle here, right? But if I want to separate this rectangle into two, let's say, then I can just click Command T and it just splits apart those two rectangles. So now I can affect this one by itself and this one by itself. And that's really, really useful. Um, it gives you more flexibility. If you want to just maybe move certain MIDI notes up or down, um, you can do that as a whole for that one MIDI region only. So let's say I want to do this. Uh, I want to break um, or trim, let's say the region at this point for all these different tracks, Command T, and it just trims them just like that. And then I can take these regions and move them around or whatever I want to do. So that one's super useful. Command T is how you do that in Logic at least. Number eight is cycle mode. So cycle mode is simply when you run to repeat a certain section of your piece. So in Logic, let's say you just want to hear a phrase and you don't want to keep on clicking back to this pot to hear it over and over again. You can basically draw in the cycle or the region of where you want the the music to start from and play back to over and over again. And so when you press space bar, obviously you hear it. And when we get to the end of this phrase, you can just try it down here a little bit. You can see it goes back automatically to the start of this cycle. Um, if I want to turn it off, I just press C and it's just gonna, it's just gonna continue on. And that's it. Let's say I want to turn it back on. I want to hear this part again. Then I press stop and start. And then it brings me back to there and I can hear that again. So cycle mode is super useful. Again, if you wanna just focus on one specific section, maybe you wanna tweak certain notes to hear how they sound, but you don't wanna keep pressing your mouse back to that playhead position to just hear that phrase over and over, that repeat mode or cycle mode is really, really useful. Number nine is automation view. So this will be useful in mixing, especially when you're trying to make sure the final elements are balanced as finely as possible. So here you can see in the six horns patch, um, I've done some very fine volume adjustments because I didn't want it to poke out too loud over the strings. And so if I want to activate this view, I just press A. If I press A again, it brings me back to the regular region view. But if I press A, the automation view is super useful. So through automation, that just means you're, you are uh, riding up and down the line to affect different parameters. In this case, I'm just affecting volume, but you can also affect the panning, the uh, solo and mute and stuff like that. And more effects if you have certain plugins that have different functionality, right? That's always useful as well. Now, maybe your DAW has automation view built into the main view as well. So maybe this shortcut won't apply to you, but for Logic, that's how you want to do that. And then finally, once you're done with the track, shortcut number 10 is to bounce the session. So you could just come up to file, export or bounce, and then press the project. But if you press command B, then that skips all of that. And it allows you to bounce the project in its entirety, um, just like that. So one simple shortcut allows you to export very, very quickly. Okay, those are the 10. So just to quickly recap, starting and stopping, I just use the space bar. It's really, really fast um, and it, I do it all the time. Going back to the beginning, if I wanna hear the entire session again, I just press enter or return. Record is R, quantize is Q, solo is S, mute is M, right? Very self-explanatory. Trimming the region at the playhead, this is a little bit more of a niche one, but you press Command T for that, and that allows you to split that region into multiple regions wherever you want so that you can affect that region by itself. Uh, number eight is cycle mode. So if you want to repeat something, you want to hear it over and over again, you can use C to activate that. Uh, number nine is automation view if you want to have those fine volume adjustments or really any other parameter. And number 10 is to bounce the session simply by using Command B instead of going to the menu and then clicking export and bounce and then choosing your uh, options there. Okay. Super short video, hope this was practical. If you wanna go a little bit deeper into my personal composing process, um, I would love to give you my free guide called the Ideal Composing Workflow. And this will go through exactly what I do to go from my initial idea all the way to the final polished master. It's super useful, it's helped a bunch of my students and I would love to give it to you as a gift for checking out this video today. Uh, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.